which would you rather have, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret, right? Because if you don't have a plan that you're executing day after day after day, if you don't have the patience to sit on your hands and wait for that one setup, chances are you're going to have one or the other. The fear might keep you out of winning trades, in which case you're going to lead to regret. So now you can connect those two emotions. I have fear, and when I don't take the actions that I know I should take, I end up with regrets. How do you win with that model? What's the next feeling for you? That might be the payoff. Do you get to bond with other people and connect? They get to hear you out. You get to talk so you feel understood. Because if intentions equal results, then I would say your job in life is to feel understood. Why risk money to get to that feeling when you can go join a men's or a women's group, go join a book club, wine tasting group, and you can talk all your deepest thoughts and make those important personal connections with other people. You don't need to use the market as that mechanism. You see what I'm saying? So it gets kind of deep. And if you don't have the, the discipline, you're going to get the results that look like they're undisciplined. It's like the person who's eating 4,000 calories every day and going to the gym thinking that that's going to lead, you know, you ever watch that person overeat and then they'd go and they do sit-ups thinking like that's what's going to get you your abs when everybody, including my dead grandmother, know that your abs are created in the kitchen. So I think discipline's important. I think attitude is, and, and having a good attitude is, is also very important. That's not the first time I've said that, but look, if you want to dance one sooner or later, you got to pay the fiddler, right? And at the end of the day, if you don't have a, a, a set trading strategy that you can replicate day after day consistently, you're going to live in the world of either, you know, regrets or the pain of the discipline. For me, I was lucky. I had great discipline. Why? Like we talked about earlier this week, I had been working since I was 12. And I knew I knew I didn't like the feeling of not having money in my pocket to go do stuff with my friends. Right? Or or whatever it was at the time. I was really into fishing. I would go, you know, the lake that I had and, and some of the reservoirs and the ponds around. Right. So again, what does this have to do with trading? Nothing, but it has everything. Right. So I used to like to fish because I had a fishing license. Um, there might have been a window where I was exempt, but nonetheless, I was able to go to the reservoir and fish for rainbows and brownies in the lake at the bottom of the hill. They were stocked with everything from perch to crappies to largemouth bass. And then some of the other, there were like ponds and little lakes in upstate New York that you had to climb over trees and stuff to get to. They were not, they were stocked with fish, but they were hard to get to. And they weren't really, it's not like they were unknown. Somebody knew that they were there, but they weren't fished. So you could go in there and find 14, 15 inch largemouth bass. So I really love that. But in order to do that, I needed a tackle box. I needed those long pliers where you could reach into the fish's mouth and get the hook out because I would use you know, lures and spoons, real worms. We could dig up our own worms and bring our own bait. You know, I eventually had a rowboat with oars, with a life jacket. All that stuff cost money. Not necessarily a lot of money, but those are the things that I wanted. And if I wanted them and to kind of continue that stuff, then I wanted a car, right? Because I knew I was the baby in my neighborhood. Everybody that was in my neighborhood that I was friends with were between two and five years older than me. So I started becoming a teenager. They had their own cars. And it was fun because they could come pick me out. All of a sudden, we got a pocket full of cash. We can go wherever we want. You know, and it's just fun to have liquidity at that point, whether you're playing Mrs. Pac-Man or getting a slice of pizza, doing whatever it is that you were doing. You could just afford to go see a film, blah, blah, blah. I had to fund that all myself for the most part. It's not to say my parents didn't help me. Sure they did. But I, I just always felt like it was on me to provide for myself. Something that I still feel to this day, like I don't want to rely on anybody else. I carve it out of stone. I do it all myself. And then I kept scaling up. You know the story. Eventually, you know, built out the landscaping. Then I, you know, I went to school and did this and that. And I remember thinking like, man, I don't really want to go to work. I don't like that feeling. I'd much rather go, I, uh, you know, with my girlfriend to Jones Beach or something like that in Long Island or the Jersey Shore. 
to like Spring Lake. But I also knew that there were decisions to make. And so the way I looked at making the decisions, I would look at the emotional intelligence of it. And again, like I said, I was born this way. So I'm damn lucky. I know it. But I would say, okay, what do I want to do? Do I want to miss a, d a day or perhaps the weekend at the golf course, knowing that the caddy master knows I'm not there, knowing that that's going to affect whether I go out during the week because he, he, take, he takes care of the people that take care of him, especially on the weekends. Do I want that type of retribution? So I thought about, okay, what about the pleasure of going and doing this thing versus the, all the other feelings that I know I'm going to have to feel afterwards? And then that became part of my equation. So when I came to trade, I would say, okay, I could do the undisciplined thing right now because it feels good now. Which is, say, take a winning trade off just because it's Friday and for some reason only bad things happen over the weekend. It's the truth. Only bad things can happen. It can never close Friday and open up stronger on Monday. Which, you know, I don't know why people think what they think. But again, it's this Johnny Cochran logic. And so I would look at the feelings that I wanted to feel based on the results that I knew that were possible. And then that's how I made my decision. If I went out with my friends and had a couple more Guinnesses than I should have, I still said like I can't miss work the next day. I can't miss my commitments the next day because then it makes it even worse. And again, I was lucky I had good parents because they taught me the art of follow-up. How do you follow up with people? How do you communicate? How do you manage other people's expectations? That's a huge part of being in business. Letting people know what to expect by when. And if you said you're going to get something to me by Wednesday and you need an extra day, don't call me Wednesday afternoon when it's already a few hours past when I'm looking for it. I understand. Shit happens. But don't put me in a bad spot. Right. So for everybody who works for the channel that does a lot of the production things, the thumbnails or what have you, has some very clear boundaries about what's expected of them. We spend a lot of time going over that so that they understand what they need to do by when. There's a lot of talented people out there, so the communication is key. So what are the feelings that you want to feel? If you go for the instant gratification, you're like, yeah, I'm going to just take this chance because I can't afford to miss another one. I'm in a drawdown. I'm losing money. I got to earn it all back. I got to do it now. Is that really practical? So when I, when I speak about this as a lesson, what you can kind of do is don't write out a business plan and don't even necessarily write out a trading plan. And this is number one bullshit. Think about if you're going to look at your journal, I don't care about the setup and the position sizing and your entry and then how you adjusted all this and that or what have you. That's the iceberg part that we can see. What I like to journal about is the stuff you can't see. Write down what were the feelings that you were feeling when you were at each of those inflection points. Why did you do what you did? Why did you put the trade on in the first place? Did it meet the price-based breakout or criteria that I told you about a day or two ago? And if it didn't and you put the trade on anyway, why did you do that? What feelings were you expecting to feel? Or what feelings were you hoping to feel? When you can get into this type of calculus, you can start to be your own best coach and break down your behavior. What is it that you're chasing? What feeling is it that you're in right now that you just can't possibly live with anymore that's forcing you to do really stupid shit with your money? Trading isn't about getting a sniper-like entry, but it is about laying in wait and waiting for the exact best time to put the trade on. And at the beginning, if you don't have a purely mechanized, purely 100% systematic set of trading rules, what you can do is sit on your hands and just wait for that one setup. Look across dozens of instruments. I don't care if you're buying five shares. It doesn't matter to me. Don't pigeonhole in yourself into thinking that because you have less than 10K in the market, that all you can trade are the micro contracts. They all look the same anyway. So what edge do you think you're going to get by going, okay, it's not in the MNQs. Let me look at the E-mini. Okay, it's not there. Let me look at Russell 2K. Like, you should know, you should know better in many ways. So expand your thinking. And if you don't want to do that, write down in your journal why. What is the feeling of that? 
Why can't you be open-minded? Where else are you doing that in your life? Because this could be habitual. And in this case, you could be your own worst enemy. Right? And the goal here is personal growth and to have a good life within which trading is just one part of it. And it becomes a funding source where you're like, Tebe, slot B, trades on, I put my stops, I can walk away. That's what my day looks like. Someone asked me on the channel, hey, how many trades have you done on average per month over the last four years? I'm like, it's not a stupid question, but it doesn't mean anything. Like the data point, it's a curiosity. I'm not really into the voyeurism, so chances are I don't answer it anyway. But it's not, it's not, a, it's not a data point that I would keep because it, it has nothing to do with profitability. Your job is to find your setup and put the trade on. If it shows up once a month across 100 different instruments, then you put the trade on, knowing that it's a probabilistic outcome. If you have 45 setups, hopefully you have 45 entries. Again, probability, probabil, probabilistic outcomes. What does it look like? Hard to predict. You can only just talk about it on average. But if that setup for you has positive expected value, there at the beginning of your career is your trading edge. And it's up for you to kind of come up with that, right? So you don't need a coach. Sure, we can help you accelerate that. We can help you make better decisions. But to me, it's not necessarily rocket science. You can do that on your own. And those types of setups, if they work, they don't typically work Monday and not Tuesday. It takes a long time for them to not necessarily work or even to have the expected value of the trade change so much that it might be not worth your while, depending on what your goals are. We do goal setting in week number one. Why else would you trade if you don't know what the hell you're doing it for? It would make no sense to me. And the answer is not to become a millionaire. This is empty. This is not the goal. There has to be something about the money that you need or that you want, something that you could do with it. Maybe it's make other investments. Maybe it's the feelings that you think you want to have of financial independence, feelings that you don't have now, feelings that you can anticipate that might be good feelings. It's all very personal. But sooner or later, you're going to have to come down to deal with doing things out of discipline, even if they don't feel good in the moment of now, because you know the payoff in the future is going to be giving you the emotions that you want. Even if you lost money in last month, in the month of, month of March, even if you're down a little bit in, in April, you take solace in the fact that you followed your rules day after day after day. They have positive expected value. Yes, you're going to have drawdowns from time to time. That's the way it goes. You roll with the punches. The best you can do is follow your setups and put those trades on. You're powerless over the results, so get over it. It's not up to you. The best you can do is put the trade on and manage the risk. Honor your protective stops. Because even if you're down 5% and you might be down, eventually be down 7%, so what? It's only money. What the hell do you care? You're judged on your consistent behavior. Get out of the P&L land, all right? That's going to help you grow enormously. It did me. You like this video? Check out these right here.